Sal Sindor, the slim seven-footer playing center at UCLA. They didn't know about Bobby Hill and the Hill Street Blues, but they did know about the real-life Mike Warren and the Bruins. And when you said the word dynasty, people didn't think about John Forsythe. Rather, they thought of John Wooden. He was the Wizard of Westwood. And if you look next to him here, you'll see the Sorcerer's Apprentice, one Denny Crum. He looks a lot more dapper these days, of course. And in the spring, he was again coaching a national champion. Our Billy Packer looks back at the past season in college basketball. is dead at 22. Two days ago, he was all smiles. Two days ago, his whole life was ahead of him. The Cardinals have won the national championship. Danny Crum does it again. In the world of college basketball, 1986 became the year of the shot clock and the rule book and coaches in and coaches out. Some warm moments, some magic memories and tragedy. Yes, even a matter of life and death. It was the year when you got to expect the unexpected. Gone forever were the days of stall ball. Instead, in came a 45 second shot clock and all of a sudden, that became the time to beat. This season, rule changes included a controversial three point line, only 19 feet, nine inches from the center of the basket. Another change sidelines some prize recruits by upgrading academic requirements. It's called the NCAA Proposition 48. On the court, there were big surprises as well. The United States shocked the Soviet Union by winning the World Basketball Championship for the first time in 32 years. As for individual honors, our Collegiate Player of the Year was St. John's Walter Berry, who showed moves rarely found inside. For the women, it was goodbye to USC's Cheryl Miller. She brought class, charisma, and respectability to her sport, but she could only watch as the Lady Longhorns capped the 34-0 season with a national title. Shot of the year? Hey, there can only be one. Watch Triton College's James Parker. Now you've heard the old saying about having eyes in the back of your head kind of makes you wonder how many points they should have awarded for that kind of shooting. Our coach of the year goes to Duke's Mike Krzyzewski. Georgetown's John Thompson was honored by being named the coach of our 1988 U.S. Olympic basketball team. And we said farewell to retirees Guy Lewis of Houston and Jack Hartman of Kansas State. On the downside, Memphis State's Dana Kirk was fired, and his personal finances became the subject of a grand jury scrutiny. Lefty Drizel was forced out at Maryland, this in the aftermath of the Len Bias tragedy. In many ways, it was a turbulent year off the court for the college game, quite often for all the wrong reasons. No story, though, had more impact than the cocaine-related death of Len Bias, two days after the Boston Celtics had drafted him number one. Unfortunately, the, the season was overwhelmed, I think, by the Len Bias tragedy it probably um, transcended the game and it, and it is the one most important story coming out of last season. To the victor goes the spoils and this is what they're playing for, the National Collegiate Championship Trophy. Sometimes it's not the victor, it's really the survivor. Now that our tournament has expanded to 64 teams, it's somebody that can survive March Madness that finally gets his trophy. Many times it's a case of David and Goliath, and this year we had a little of both. The United States Naval Academy is an unlikely place for a collegiate powerhouse, but this man changed it all. In March, David Robinson was a dominant force in the tournament. His heroics led Navy to the East Regional Final, and this year he's hoping for even more. When I was in high school, you know, Michael Jordan was in at North Carolina, and, uh, and Ralph Sampson was in Virgi at Virginia, and I... I, uh, I just marveled at them and never figured that I'd be on anywhere near their level. There were other Cinderella stories. Unheralded Cleveland State upset proud Indiana and reached the Sweet 16. Arkansas Little Rock slew mighty Notre Dame. And Dale Brown's Louisiana State Tigers emerged from an amazing sequence of down-to-the-wire finishes to make it all the way to the Final Four. 
Ellis proved to be a gracious host, but LSU's hopes for a miracle title were quickly put to rest. The Louisville Cardinals were at the top of their game. The other semifinal pitted Duke against Kansas, and this crucial basket by Danny Ferry gave Duke the victory. That kind of counterbalanced the outlawishness of some of the rest of the season. We were all uh, so intrigued with, with, with the Dukies to the point where a lot of cynical journalists, shall I say, uh, it was almost a backlash. Said, These guys are too good to be true. I mean, you know, what do we, you know, Plato isn't playing in the Final Four. Let's get back to well, what this is really like. The top-ranked Blue Devils got off to a fast start. Johnny Dawkins ripped off 15 points in the first half. The Duke fans sensed the title as Dawkins' tenacious defense continually harassed the Cardinals. But in the second half, Louisville's defense took over, and freshman Purvis Ellison made all the big plays. And when all was said and done, the Cardinals reigned as national champs for the second time in the 80s. For Denny Crum, the lessons he had learned from the legendary John Wooden at UCLA have served him well. Still to come, Brent Musburger with the year the Mets made all the plays and a 